carbonyl compounds exhibit great structural diversity, and they differ primarily on the numbers and types of atoms linked to the carbonyl group. So different types of atoms, different elements will be linked, and different numbers of different types of elements will be linked to the carbonyl group. And we name and classify carbonyl compounds on this basis, and we've started to do this a little bit already. The simplest class of carbonyl compounds in which either carbon or hydrogen is linked to the carbonyl com carbon are called aldehydes or ketones. In an aldehyde, we have one or two hydrogens linked to the carbonyl carbon with a carbon group on the other side if we only have one. This is called an aldehyde. When two carbon groups are linked to the carbonyl carbon, we call that a ketone. And I'll collectively refer to aldehydes and ketones as ketohydes. In some contexts, there's not that much difference between carbon and hydrogen, and aldehydes and ketones react similarly. And so we'll refer to them collectively in those cases as ketohydes. When we replace one of those carbon or hydrogen groups with the heteroatom, we end up with what are called the carboxylic acid derivatives, or the parent compounds, which are called carboxylic acids. The carboxylic acid contains a hydroxyl group linked to the carbonyl carbon, and the other carboxylic acid derivatives are at the same oxidation level as the carboxylic acid. In other words, we can imagine them as substitution products of the carboxylic acid, where the hydroxyl group has been replaced by some other heteroatomic group. For example, in the amide, we see NR2. In the ester, we see an alkoxy group instead of the hydroxyl group. In the acyl chloride, we see chlorine linked to the carbonyl carbon. And in the acyl phosphate, we see a phosphate group linked through its oxygen to the carbonyl carbon. And at this point, I would be remiss if I didn't mention one additional important carboxylic acid derivative, which contains a thiol or sulfide group linked to the carbonyl carbon. And this is referred to as a thioester. This is the sulfur analog of an ester. We'll be seeing these later in a biochemical context, and so I felt obliged to mention them here. One way to think about the carboxylic acid derivatives is as variations on the theme of what's called the acyl group, which is a name we use to refer to a carbonyl group linked to either a carbon or hydrogen, which I've here denoted as R. If you look at all the carboxylic acid derivatives, the thing you'll notice is that they all consist of an acyl group which I'm here highlighting in blue, attached to some heteroatomic group. So for the carboxylic acid, I've highlighted the acyl group in blue. Here it is in the amide. Here it is in the ester, acyl chloride, and acyl phosphate. And those last two examples really highlight how we think about the acyl group as kind of the positive side, if you like, because the carbon atom is electrophilic of the bond between the heteroatom and the carbonyl carbon. If we replace the other R group with yet another heteroatomic group, we arrive at what I call the carbonic acid derivatives. Carbonic acid has the formula H2CO3, and if you draw a Lewis structure for it, you'll realize that it's a carbonyl group flanked by two hydroxyl groups. Carbonic acid derivatives are similar but contain other heteroatomic groups linked to a central carbonyl carbon, specifically two of them. For example, urea contains two amino groups linked to the carbonyl carbon. A carbamate contains an NR2 group and an OR group linked to a carbonyl carbon. And a carbonate contains two alkoxy groups linked to a carbonyl carbon. Notice that the carbonate is very similar to carbonic acid with carbon groups, R groups, replacing the hydrogens. So carbonic acid derivatives have the same oxidation level as carbonic acid and in some ways are similar to carbon dioxide, which also contains two bonds to a heteroatom in the form of a double bond rather than two single bonds. So this slide pretty much summarizes the full extent of the things we're going to talk about regarding carbonyl compound nomenclature. And while the functional group names are certainly important, the most important point is this distinction between ketohydes, carboxylic acid derivatives, and carbonic acid derivatives. The chemistry of these compounds differs in important ways. We'll go into details later, but just to whet your appetite here, one thing to notice about the carboxylic acid derivatives that's lacking in the ketohydes is that we have a potential leaving group within the carboxylic acid derivatives that we do not have in the ketohydes. The acyl chloride is a great example of this. Cl has great potential to act as a leaving group or nucleophage 
we don't have a heteroatom that can depart with a pair of electrons in the aldehyde and ketone. That makes the chemistry of the ketohydes very different from the carboxylic acid derivatives. And we'll look at the details in a future video.